I guess you are puzzled but not confused when I say that planting trees is not a solution. Collecting plastic and recycling is not a solution. Technological growth is not a solution. Policy making is not a solution. Yes, it's okay to be puzzled, but let us not get confused. So the real question is, then what is the solution for climate change? Well, I think you yourself know the solution. But anyway, let us come to the solution. I'm going to ask you simple question. You have to answer me in yes or no. Even if you're watching this video, tell yes and no in your mind. So is the science growing? Yes. Is the technology growing? Yes. Is the economy growing? Yes. But does the size of our planet growing? No. The amount of minerals growing? No. The soil growing? No. Nothing on this planet is growing. There's only one truth. The size of our planet is finite. Every resource of our planet is finite. Therefore, how should our consumption be? Finite. I think this is the first and foremost and the most important boundary conditions of living on this planet that on a finite planet, we should have finite consumption. But the truth is, science is growing, technology is growing, we are trying to grow economy, we are trying to increase our GDP, produce more, consume more. How can we do this? Can we stretch our planet and make it bigger? No, we can't. We can't do that. But look at us. The number of clothes in our cupboards are increasing. The size of our car is increasing. The amount of buildings are increasing. Everything is increasing. We are behaving, we are acting as if there is a second planet on the store. But wake up and realize there is no second planet. We have only one planet and that is finite. So let us have finite consumption. Everything that we consume comes from only one source. Our clothes, our cars, our mobile phone, our computer, they all come from one source. And Mother Earth is not expanding, but our appetite is expanding. Everything that we are using is growing. We want more comfort. We want more convenience. We want more of everything. But look, this is not going to work. There are some things which are eternal that doesn't change. For example, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. It cannot be 5 or 6 if your science is growing, if your technology is growing, isn't it? That's eternal truth. Similarly, our consumption is growing, our production is growing, our number of cloths are growing, car size is growing, everything is growing. But there is one eternal truth. The size of planet is not growing. So when the size of planet is finite, our consumption also has to be only finite. It cannot grow. And this is not just a philosophy, this is physics. This is non-negotiable boundary conditions of living on this planet. If you really want to live on this planet and survive, you must limit the consumption. Let us think in this way. If your salary is fixed, what should happen to your expenses? That should also be fixed. So when the resources on the planet are finite, our consumption should also be finite. Whether you like it or not, this is the only truth and we all must follow it from today. Well, there is another way to understand why should we limit our consumption on this finite planet. The concept of Earth Overshoot Day. What does it tell us? It tells us that we are overshooting our consumption. Means whatever Earth can regenerate in one year, we are consuming 1.7 times of that. Where is this extra coming from? There is no second earth. There is only this earth. So where is this extra coming from? Well, we are actually stealing what is not ours. We are stealing from our future generation. We are stealing from our own future. As a result of that, we have polluted our air, we have polluted our water, we have polluted our soil. No parents can guarantee today that their children can breathe clean air, that their children can drink a glass of water without filtering that their children can eat food without chemicals. No, why? Because we are doing too much on this finite planet. We humans cannot even create an extra atom. Everything is finite. We can only take, we can only transform and then rest from this planet only. And therefore, it is of utmost importance that we limit our consumption. Because if we don't limit ourselves, the earth will the catastrophic climate change will definitely limit us. 
Hope you understand. The message is clear. Here is the final truth. The first and foremost important solution to the climate change is limiting consumption. Yes, policies are important, technology are important, even planting trees, but that will come at the secondary stage. First, we have to limit the consumption. And that is exactly why, based on my learning of five years of Energy Suraj Yatra, traveling all over the country, the Energy Suraj Foundation has launched a very unique, universal, global movement. We call it the Finite Earth Movement. And it has a simple message that is not only logical, but unavoidable. That on the finite earth, we can have only finite consumption. And as soon as we start to limit our consumption, technology and policy will also start to do their job. But we need everybody on the board. We need billions of people joining this Energy Swaraj movement. And that will not happen through policies and technology. It will happen through people. So Energy Swaraj movement is not just a campaign, it's just not an app, it is a global public movement. And everyone should be part of it. And I would like you should be part of it. But let me ask you some questions, then it will become clear to you. Are you living on this planet? Yes. Then this movement is yours. Are you consuming on this planet? Yes. Are you contributing to the climate change on this planet? Yes. Then this movement is yours. This moment is mine. This moment is ours. This moment is of all the 8 billion people living on this planet. So what are you waiting? Come and join the finite earth movement.